Good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer for allowing me to share our work here. My name is Ignatius Giorito. I'm a research scientist in, at Genomes Institute of Singapore. And today, uh, I will share briefly to you uh, about our recent finding. But before we start uh, into detail, I will, I will like to give you a brief introduction about CRC or what uh, or colorectal cancer or what you usually call as a CRC. So uh, according to World Health Organization, actually CRC was uh, the third most common malignancy and also the second most deadly cancer worldwide. In Singapore, actually the statistic is uh, relatively almost similar, but uh, and also the number of frequency between male and female is also almost equal. Um, in the number of incidents actually usually higher in the more developed country, but in the recent year, more and more cases was found in the middle and low income country as well. Um, in general, older people are more prone to CRC, but in the recent year, there is a more and more incidence of uh, early onset CRC in the much younger population, for example, with people in the, their 30s. Hence, uh, raising awareness of CRC is uh, very becoming very important because uh, we we try to promote the, we we try to promote the healthier lifestyle or maybe enhance the screening protocol or even finding a novel strategy for CRC management in order to reduce the morbidity or mortality of uh, CRC in the future. Um, um, unfortunately, CRC is a very heterogeneous disease. So uh, they, they have a many different subtypes of CRC and this, this different subtype actually have a different prognosis and also a different therapeutic response. Uh, because of this reason, actually there was a lot of uh, effort has been done recently to uh, stratify this patient into bin so we can treat this patient in a different group uh, differently. <clears throat> Uh, the consensus molecular uh, subtype, or what we usually call as CMS, is currently the state of the art transcriptomic classification for CRC. Actually, for this CMS, they divide CRC into four different group subtypes. The first one is the CMS1, which is uh, characterized with the immune infiltration and also uh, activation. The second one is the CMS2, which is uh, characterized with the WNT and also MIC activation. The third one is CMS3, which is characterized usually with the metabolic dysregulation. And the last one is the CMS4, which is uh, the metastatic uh, subtype and also characterized with the high stroma content. Um, this might being able to classify most of the CRC tumor. Actually, this uh, CMS classification is still based on the bulk arena sick data, which as we know, have a sev uh, some set limitation. For example, it might miss the signature of distinct cell type, and also uh, it will completely miss the tumor microenvironment interaction. Uh, actually, a lot of effort has been done in the, in the past recent years, uh, for example, uh, to, to, to tackle this problem. For example, in 2017, Isela et al. Uh, proposed a new classification system. They call it uh, as CRIS classification. And in here, actually, the human tumor was propagated uh, as patient-derived xenograph in, on mice. And then, but again, this kind of approach has their own limitation as well. For example, it might have an experimental artifact of human tumor propagated across species. Uh, because of this reason, we try to uh, utilize the scrna seq technology, will be, will, which will be able to uh, directly address the current limitation. In, the, in our study, actually, we're collecting data from five different cohorts from three different countries, Singapore, Belgium, and also Korea. And in here, uh, we are actually sequencing the, uh, 189 samples from 63 patients. And after several rounds of QC and also a high, uh, high uh, or stringent QC cutoff, we end up with uh, 373,000 uh, 373, high-quality cells in which we will only focus on the 49,000 epithelial cell because we want to, uh, this is the cell type that we are interested on. And then after that, uh, we will try to validate our finding using the bigger cohort because our sample is only 64, 63 patient. Uh, so we will try to uh, validate our finding with the uh, bulk transcriptomic data, which has uh, 3,614 uh, patients from 15 different cohorts. 
And finally, we will perform an integrative analysis. <clears throat> so for the epithelial subtype, actually we found that uh, most of the cell actually form a patient-specific cluster, as you can see in this figure here. However, we believe that this effect is not due to the best effect because we're still able to found a, a one normal cluster here and then all the normal class sample that we collected from this patient are actually clumped together in this particular cluster. So we believe this is not the wedge effect and it meets might be a biological uh, differences that we can see in here. And then after that, we also calculate the serobac transcriptome from this patient specific cluster and using PCA analysis to our surprise that we can easily found to a very distinct two sub subgroup with a very distinct marker as you can see in this figure here. Uh, <clears throat> so after that, we try to validate our finding into uh, using four different cohort that we have. So in here, we again clustering all the epithelial cell using the marker gene that we found before in the heat map before, and then uh, similar observation as again found. For example, we found again the patient-specific cluster for all the epithelial cell with a one very uh, one normal cluster that usually consists all of the normal cell that we uh, normal sample that we collected um, after that uh, using the PC analysis of patient specific field work we again found the two subgroup as again self emerged in this four cohort hence uh, this uh, support our previous uh, observation in uh, in the in the our uh, so-called uh, training cohort so um, go back to our ICMS gene set Actually, we noticed that these ICMS2 marker are actually enriched for genes that are come from chromosome 20, 13, and also 8. This result is uh, quite interesting for us at that time, so that's why we uh, decided to do a more thorough analysis using a, soft, uh, a package that uh, called as an inverse CNV. So um, in here, uh, as you can see in this heat map here, uh, actually we found a almost similar observation, such as that all most of the I2 patients are actually having a lot of CNV in chromosome 20, 13, and also uh, 8. While for the I, uh, ICMS uh, I3 group, they are mostly uh, deployed or have a very few uh, CNV profile. Um, actually, to obtain this heat map, we also, do a perf uh, we also perform a, a de novo clustering at the patient level. And then, out of 63 patients, actually only two patients are ha having a different ICMS label compared to the transcriptonic analysis that we did. And then furthermore, because this one is in the at patient level or pseudobulking level, so we also try to do uh, the clustering at the single cell level. And then after that, we label this uh, cell using the, 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 the label that we get in the, in, at the patient level. And then in here again, we see that there is a distinct, uh, they are separated in the located in the distinct uh, location in the UMF space, they are very distinct. So um, this result actually suggests that the copy number alteration uh, might contribute to the observed dichotomy that we found before in the CRC epithelial cell. <clears throat> um, actually, the next question that we asked during that time was uh, whether the dichotomy that we found are solely due to the copy number variation or not. So to answer this question, we try to do a, or perform an independent analysis using a package called CINIC. And then in here, we basically uh, calculate, we'll calculate the regulatory activity of transcriptional factor and their target gene, or what we usually call as a regulon. Here, we will cluster all the uh, uh, epithelial cells from five different cohorts, and then using the 349, uh, 47 regulars that we identified, we again uh, found that there is a two subtype when there is one uh, normal cluster here that self-emerge. Furthermore, we also found a 90 differentially expressed regulon with uh, several very interesting TF, for example, TCF7 and MIG, which is highly uh, upregulated in ICMS2, while for the ICMS thing, uh, we found something like a nf kappa b that is uh, highly upregulated. So uh, this result is uh, pointing to pervasive biological program differences and not only to uh, uh, due to the copy number variants that we've seen also in the previous uh, analysis. <clears throat> um, okay, previously, uh, CRC tumor is always uh, divided into two different groups, 
The first one is they call it as a microsatellite uh, tumor, or we usually what we usually call as a MSS. And then the second one is the microsatellite instable tumor, or what we usually call as a MSI high. And then in this, uh, um, in recent year, there's a lot of uh, interest uh, put towards this MSI group because it has a better response towards the immunotherapy treatment. In our analysis, actually we found that uh, all MSI tumor are located within the I3 subgroup. However, we also found that there is some MSI uh, sample that is clustered together with the MSI group, suggesting that actually there are some MSS that look more closely, uh, more, more similar towards the MSI compared to the I2 MSS. Um, actually, this result is uh, very interesting because previously people is, has always assumed a high level dichotomy between a uh, microsatellite stable and microsatellite instable. Hence, uh, understand, uh, understanding this uh, immunological makeup of I2 and I3 MSS cancer could uh, inform a subtype directed development of immunotherapy treatment. <clears throat> Next, uh, we try to validate this finding in the bigger cohort using bulk rna seq data. Here, uh, we use uh, again, we use the single cell ICMS marker that we found before, and then we classify the 3,614 uh, bulk transcriptomic data. Uh, and then similarly, we observe that there are two groups of patients, one with a, a high level expression of ICMS2, while the other one has a high, uh, higher expression of ICMS3. Of course, in this uh, analysis, we also found that there is some uh, sample that seems don't have a clear uh, indication whether they are uh, uh, ICMS2 or ICMS3 high. <clears throat> After that, uh, we again uh, try to uh, correlate this, uh, our finding with the clinical molecular feature of the, the, the sample, and then we found that most of the I2 actually left-sided, while most of the I3 are right-sided colon, uh, tumor. And then all the MS, almost all MSI is again located within I3 uh, subtype with uh, some MSS are clustered together with them. And then CMS1 and CMS3 are actually uh, mostly I3, while CMS2 are mostly I2. However, uh, we found in here that actually for the CMS4, they can either be I2 or I3 with almost an equal proportion, suggesting that the uh, fibrosis process might be decoupled uh, or different process than the intrinsic capitular subtype. Um, Next, uh, we try to combine the bulk transcriptomic data into single cell, uh, single gene expression matrix, and then perform a de novo clustering on it. Here, uh, so we, we didn't uh, see this is more a de novo approach instead of the classification that we use with our marker genes. So it's, uh, there's no uh, previous knowledge that we use in here actually. And then in here, we also again found a self evident organization between, uh, uh, based on the MSI status on the, on the top, top here. And then after that, the CMS, the, this uh, third uh, bar in, from the below, and then also the ICMS, which is, uh, my, again, suggests that they are, uh, maybe they are indeed the, the, the under, uh, providing the underlying structure to the molecular classification of CRC. Unfortunately, we cannot find a clear, of, uh, or a clear pattern for the CRIS classification, as you can see in the last uh, bar here. Um, in here, we also observed that uh, most of the MSI tumor are immune infiltrated, which is, uh, which is uh, indicated by high expression level of uh, cell that is uh, expressed by the immune subtype. While for the CMS4, they are mostly uh, fibrosis, which is indicated by the gene uh, that is mostly expressed by fibroblast or endothelial cell. And again, in here, we found that the CMS4 can split into two different subtypes, either is a ICMS2 or ICMS3 with the CMS, uh, CMS4 uh, um, classification. Uh, okay, as uh, reported previously, we also uh, observed a bad relapse-free survival for the CMS4 or the metastatic subtype. However, the poor uh, survival is actually a feature of uh, our subgroup, which is the ICMS3, uh, CMS4 with the ICMS3 uh, epithelial subtype. So this result is also, again, uh, very interesting because it indicates that uh, the CMS4 cancer with I3 epithelium should be the focus of biological clinical studies seeking to prevent metastasis in CRC. Uh, 
So based on the on this result, we therefore propose a reorganization of the four uh, group CMS classification into five group upon three different biological layer. We call it a uh, intrinsic epithelial sub, uh, status, microcellular status, and also the presence or absence of privacy. Together, we name our classification system as a IMF classification, uh, which stratified to more into five different classes, as you can see in this figure here. Uh, unfortunately, due to the limitation of time, I think I don't have uh, enough uh, time to explain to you one by one about the, the biological uh, insight of these two subgroups. Maybe we can uh, discuss it uh, further later. So, uh, in summary, in this study, we propose a new five-way classification of the colorectal cancer based upon three biological, uh, and then we call this uh, classification system as an IMF classification. Using SCRNASIC data, we identified two intrinsic epithelial uh, cancer subtype, which we called as ICMS2 and ICMS3. The intrinsic epithelial dichotomy was also found in the bulk CRC transcriptome, where ICMS3 underlies the epithelium for bulk CMS1 and CMS3, while I2 underlined the epithelium for bulk ICM, uh, CMS2. And lastly, we also found that CMS4 is actually uh, evenly split between cancer with ICMS2 and ICMS3 epithelium, in which uh, fibroblastic ICMS3 has uh, the worst prognostic value. Mm -hmm. uh, with this, I would thank, like to thank my uh, mentor, Dr. Uh, Siam Prabakar, and also Ian Tan, our collaborator of all the funding agency and also uh, people that work in the project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ignatius. Uh, are there any questions from the audience uh, to the speaker? Yeah, please. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for a great talk. So I um, work a little bit with um, um, colorectal cancer and uh, what we did, we looked at the response to treatment in uh, um, two specific um, drug regimens, Folfox and Folfiri, and using some pathway analysis methods that we um, designed, we were able to identify pathways and genes that um, we think uh, can predict uh, the response of the treatment. And you have a great cohort, um, and uh, you've done a different type of subtyping. So the question is, do you have um, treatment data or survival data for these patients? Because if you do, I would love to talk to you and maybe I'm looking for a different cohort in which I could confirm or inform uh, our findings. So do you have any treatment data or survival data for these patients? Um, yes, actually we do have some um, uh, treatment data. In fact, uh, one of our cohort that we use has a, I mean, a treatment data actually, but it's uh, again, with a collaboration with other groups. So I'm not really sure whether it can be shared publicly. And then also for the survival data, as you, I, I showed you before, right, there is a survival data that we also did. But again, that data is come from the Belgium cohort. And then I think the data is, is re also restricted in, this, uh, in our collaborator hand. Okay, we, can, we, can, we can talk separately. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the next question, please. Yeah. Hi, um, thanks. It's a really nice talk. Um, actually, really curious about the MSI high cases. Um, would you happen to have information on whether they have are likely to be like germline or somatic cases? Because that might explain some of the differences you see in those cases. Germline or so somatic? It, yeah, it is actually you... whether um, like for some of the patients, do they have like bilateral loss for the MSH genes, for example, or if you? I think it's slightly <coughs> that it's just like somatic, for example, only in the tumor that they have that variant. Well, um, actually, in, in our study, we are focused uh, mostly in the in the in the larger copy number variation, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, in the sense CNV, mm -hmm. and then also we utilize the transcriptomic data. But uh, so our uh, to to answer you short, our study is not focused on finding the somatic yet for mm -hmm. the MSI high, but according to literature that usually I found, they seems to have a more sporadic mutation and then uh, they don't, I think mostly in the somatic region as well. And then uh, also the, you know, the, the dose gene that is related with the gen, gene repair is also a defect. Uh, and then also, yeah, but I think 
for our study, we didn't focus on that yet, even though we have uh, WGS data as well. Uh, okay, um, yeah. yeah, I think we can chat because I'm working on CRC as well. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's say one last question. Uh, your classification is just formal straightforward on the expression profiles, as I understand so far, yes? Yes. Uh, uh, did you get any idea about some uh, remarkable uh, molecular mechanisms involved, especially in the case uh, you had an overlap of one class of MSS uh, examples uh, with MSI uh, uh, profiles, yeah? So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, did you understand what is the driving mechanism that uh, these two groups of uh, cancers puts together? Uh, so, for our data, actually, we started with the transcriptomic data, but yeah. later on, we tried to validate with the uh, genomics data as well. Yeah. So, in there, we found that these two groups have uh, at least a very distinct CNV profile, but it's not only due to the CNV profile. And then for the biological insight, for the ICMS2 subtype, which is have a lot of CNV, they are generally uh, upregulated with the gene that is uh, like me, WNT pat, uh, mm -hmm. uh, beta catenin pathway, the, the mm -hmm. classical pathway. But for the uh, ice, uh, and also they are related to the adenomatous polyp. So there is uh, one paper recently in the 2001, I think, uh, in the cell, and then it's uh, talking about adenomatous polyp and also sessile serrated. Mm -hmm. And then this ICMS2 particular subtype are related, uh, have a similar signal to the adenomatous polyp, while for the ICMS3 somehow has a signal for the uh, sessile serrated poly mm -hmm. and also have a gastric metasplasia signature. Mm -hmm. So we thinking like this uh, ICMS3 maybe have a more like a, they are in the uh, secretory uh, or the upper uh, colon part and then they have a lot of injuries. So it's uh, more like nf couple b and then also have a immune score is mm -hmm. much higher in the ICMS3 while mm -hmm. for the ICMS2 is more like the classical, you know, the stem sure. cell get mutated and then the stem mm -hmm. grow indefinitely, something like that because of the MIG and beta-catenin mm -hmm. and APC mutation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir.